Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, yes, yes. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. I got a lot to be thankful for. First of all, thankful to I'm thankful for all my subscribers, all the people in the chat. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for this swagger dash. I'm thankful for this good health. Yeah, yeah, I'm thankful. I got a lot to be thankful for. Thankful for this good turkey that I'm about to eat. How they both said that you about to receive. <laughs> Ooh, and, and did I say I'm thankful for this wagon there? Did I say that? Oh, yeah, I said that already. <coughs> yeah, I'm thankful for this wagon there. Uh huh. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning to y'all. Happy Turkey Day. I hope y'all have a turkey bowl or something like that in your city. The turkey bowl is when we used to play football. A bunch of old people used to go out and think we was bad still. And we'd go out there and play football. If you was a quarterback, you tried to come back out there and relive your old quarterback days. If you was a receiver, you pulled your hamstring trying to show you were still fast. If you was a linebacker, you tore your knee up trying to get they going to plant to hit somebody hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody out there. Boy, look at here. Everybody out there leave their so up, toe up, hurt up, uh, got drunk. But we had a good time though. Couple fights. Yeah, we had a couple fights. Nigga changed size and played on the other side of town and no got beat up, but never no guns. We had fun. You know, men get together, sometimes they get drunk, they play football, they fight, but everything gonna be all right. You know. The dudes that brought their girlfriends, sorry about their luck. They saw them get beat up. Hey. <laughs> Did I say thank you for this swagger dad? Oh, Again? yeah, <coughs> I, I thought I forgot. <coughs> yeah, I'm ready, boy. <coughs> this is that new shit. Hold up, this is that Thanksgiving shit. Hold on, y'all. <coughs> yes, Lord. Pass me the hookah. Ooh, ooh. Man, this that this that shit make you got that. Mm -hmm. This that shit make you stay home and be a good husband. Yeah, this that shit make you stay home. You be thinking about doing all kind of stuff. You hit this right here, you stay home and be a good husband. Now you might no, 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 you might not do none of the shit your wife asked you to do. Yeah, you'll procrastinate. You'll get to it. She be cussing you out all day. You'll finally get to it about 8 p.m., but she asks you about 8.30 a.m. Yeah, you'll finally get to it. <laughs> he talking about Mike Tyson punch out. Nicholas said Mike Tyson punch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Mike. Woo, woo, woo. I'm talking about man. Yeah, wake and bake. I've been, no, I ain't wake and bake. I've been up since 4.30. I took my time to bake. It's, it's 7 30. I've been up three three fucking hours. Yeah, I've been up three hours. Man, I, I, I took a long time for our bake. It was a lot of pressure. I said, how you wake up is how you end the day. So I said, I ain't gonna wake up smoking. I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna stretch. I woke up, I stretch. You know. I was thinking a little bit, planning out my day, planning how many plates I'm gonna eat. Different things of that nature, you know. Yeah, I wasn't gonna wake up straight up and bake, you know. I said, Man, you know, can't do that. I mean, you can, I've done it. Shit. Yeah, I ain't gonna wake up straight up and bake. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake up and stretch. Mm -hmm. Look at a few emails. Make make me feel like I'm getting something accomplished before I get high. I don't feel guilty or nothing. That's the go-to right there. Look at an email. <laughs> so you don't feel guilty. The least you can do is answer a few emails. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> yeah. And shout out to Dwight Howard. Yeah, man. Shout out to Dwight Howard, man. Dwight Howard. I'm proud of Dwight Howard, man. It's a damn shame how they doing Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard, in my opinion, is the top 75. I mean, before the injuries and all that, Dwight Howard played at a high level for a long time. Yeah, he yeah, he paid homage to Shaq. And so I, I don't get the whole beef. I don't get the problem. Like, but I do like uh Dwight's response. Like, and I'm gonna tell you, I ran into Dwight in Miami. I always meet, I always see somebody right after I got them swagger daddy. You know, I'll be stuck, don't feel like talking and shit. So I was, he talking about being stupid. <laughs> so shit, I had just finished smoking. And then I was coming out and I left my fucking wallet. We down there in Miami at the Four Seasons. I left my wallet in the seat. So the lady called me back like, yo, you left your wallet. I'm high tripping. So I'm like, oh, shit. So then I see this big entourage of people. I didn't know who it was at first, but I ran back to get my wallet. So he may have thought I was dissing him because I heard somebody say, Kwame. But right as the lady called me, I ran back to get my wallet. Uh, so I came back out. He like, damn, dog, you dissed me like that? I'm like, no, nah, bro, I ain't diss you, man. I'm like, shit, I left my wallet in there. But I'm high as a motherfucker trying not to let them know I'm high as hell. Like 12, 15 of them jokers, boy. But I was high in a Jiminy Cricket. So shout out, so shout out to the white. I wasn't trying to dish you, brother. Um, but I, I do love his response that he gave Shaq because he didn't do it with hate. He didn't do it. He was like, Man, nigga, we looked up to you, nigga. We we wanted to be you. So why would you keep coming at people with these type of disses? Like, where the love at? Like, if that man would have went over there and played bad, they would have dissed him, they would have went crazy on him. But the white actually went over there. He playing well. He playing crazy, putting up crazy numbers. Like, and for Shaq to say that, like them people over there, just bombs. Like, come, this is still a professional level. Is it the NBA? No, but it's a professional. It's a professional level. He's getting paid to do this. And are we losing sight of what the hell basketball was for? It's a game to have fun. And Dwight Howard is still getting paid for it. So how do you scrutinize somebody that's over there playing professional sports, a game that he loved, that he still can play at a high level at his age? Like, you got to commend that work for him to still be in this type of shape at 30-something years old. What is he, 36? He got to be 36, 37. Let me see. Dwight Howard's age. Let me look up and see how old he is. Well, he looked like he he looked like he do he looked like he in better shape when he came in the league. Let's see, seven foot six ten. He's thirty six. Yeah, so he's thirty six years old. Shit, I'm forty. I can't run up and down like that. That man, thirty six years old, he's still moving up and down the court very well. Still jumping with explosion. He could help a team in the NBA. Right now, but the fact that he's going over there putting up those type of numbers is a good thing. That's what he's supposed to do. He's representing his. He's representing uh, the NBA well by going over there and being a supreme athlete, even at thirty six years old. So I don't get it. That what 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 was the point? That that was no point in that. It was no point in that at all. I'm like, damn. He said in the video he's 37. Okay, so he's 37. And that's that's crazy to be. How many 37? So you telling me there's a bunch of, I don't give a damn if you seven foot or not. You think there's a bunch of 37-year-old seven-footers that's in the shape that Dwight is in? That'll go over there and put up the numbers he put in? Man, please. Come on, man. You got to give that man his credit, man. That man, you know how much commitment that is to being in shape like that? That means he getting up every single day. That's professionalism. That man is being a professional. He getting up every single day working out. That's his job. Fuck that. You can't hate on that, man. Shaq need to stop that shit. Like, 
when does a black man get peace man when can we they're not they're not doing this to black women in sports they don't just wake up every day and disparage a black woman's game or say negative shit like this like come on man this man trying to get back to the league he's having fun he he took it on the chin that he's not a top 75. it hurt him but he took it on the chin he know what he what type of work he put in but he took it on the chin then he go to la Go to a couple different teams. Now he got a label on them. And that's all they need to do in this NBA. In this society, we got those labels. I told you in the beginning, it's the fucking labels. Once they label you something, they do it in conversation. They do it in everything. They try to label you. Once they label you, oh, there, here's the justification on why we can't get them. Because ain't no way in the hell all them sending them sorry ass sinners that's sitting on the bench. And on some of them teams, you telling me Dwight Howard can't be a backup center somewhere? Is somebody using a situation with Dwight saying, no matter his talent, we we it's it's this about him that we can't have him on the team. It's that about him that we can't have him on the team. And there's always a nigga that got something about him. That shit don't make no sense, man. Man, to me, Dwight Howard winning. He's still in shape. He playing the game he loved, still making money, and now he just seen a whole nother part of the world, a whole nother country. So, nigga, salute to Dwight Howard. Got to hate on something. Damn, like, come on, man. I wish my old ass could still play. These ankles barely walking. <laughs> so that's just what I'll do. <laughs> I'm finna join me a goddamn 40 and over club. Fuck that shit. <coughs> <coughs> nigga, 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 I'm 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 envious. I ain't envious of Dwight Howard. I'ma salute him because I wish I could go out there and run up and down as fast as he running right now. Shit, I'm I'm finna go sign up at the YMCA. Shit, and with these ankles, I might not can't give 30 down. I might can't get up and down. So shit. I'm finna get back into Dwight Howard shape. How about that? Fuck it. That man is shape. That's dedication. They make they try to make everybody's life, every black man whole life about a goddamn game. When do we get to just enjoy life? How about you just stay out motherfucking Dwight Howard business because the man making money, enjoying life, a black man getting to go to Taiwan and move around America like Dwight Howard able to move around, and he got to still be able to talk shit about the man every other damn day? Shit. Start paying athletes $15 per hour. What? And then, so you want the white man to get all the money because the, the white man still get more than the athlete. If they can pay LeBron James $30 million a year, what the hell you think they making off of? So you want to pay the athlete $15 an hour so we can make all the owners trillionaires because that's what it happened. The owners, they're getting paid a percentage, buddy. They're getting paid a percentage. And a very small one at that if you're going to compare it, really. But it's still a lot of money. It's a lot of freaking money. But you can't hate on that, man. Stop hating on people money, man. Stop pocket watching. They don't need for all that. Don't, don't do all that pocket watching. Pocket watching and hating. That's, that's the way of the world now. And clout chasing. Pocket watching, hating, and clout chasing. That's the two dangerous things right now that's going on. Which one worse? Pocket watching, hating, or clout chasing. Oh, because that clout chasing might, I think that might be at the top. Motherfucker key you over some clout chasing. You think all three? Oh, fucking three. Yeah, man. That is, I don't know. What y'all think? Which one is worse? Clout chasing? Uh, what else did I say? Pocket watching. Oh, fucking hate. Cause we gotta figure out what's the dangerous things across America. I think 
some of these things are causing a lot of these problems. I think clout chasing need to be abolished. <laughs> Not your damn business talking about being black. I think clout chasing need to be abolished. And the word clout is the worst, uh, and, and, uh, not the word clout, the word troll. Cause you know, when they say they trolling, they usually have some of the worst behaviors you can think of. So they, yeah, they want to use this word called troll and clout to just get away with basically bitch ass nigga, you just hate. You either trying to bully or you, or you just hate. And I'm seeing the ugly trend of the clout chase and the hate. It's always directed towards black folk. It's always directed towards black folk. Let me hold that little uh, butter dish. These niggas don't even compete with white folk. Like when I think of real estate, I think of Grant Cardone. I don't think of no nigga that I'm going to compete with. I, I don't think of no dude, no black guy I want to compete with. I think of this white man got two, three billion dollars in real estate. I want to get some of that. I don't want to get his, but I want to. I want to copy that model. That's success. That's never going broke. That's wealthy. That's you can't cancel. <laughs> that nigga go get that buffer will get some credit, some tax credit, or some goddamn loans against that land. He'll never need a job. He can literally pull out his pants and shake his dingling at any group and say, forget all y'all. Pretty much. This is amazing, man. Ooh, this bread here is so good. Many of these athletes aren't appreciative of the money. Who's this person there? If you're not an athlete, who baby mama this is right here? Who baby mama this is in my chat? This baby mama right here is talking about, well, many of these athletes aren't appreciative of the money they get and attack Americanism. What? I don't know. This is somebody, baby mama. What the fuck does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is. Are you an uh, athlete? Yeah, you seem to know a whole lot about athletes and athlete pay. So I'm assuming you're a baby mom. You know a lot. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Either. She, he. Yeah, man. What y'all eat for Thanksgiving besides turkey? I hope none of y'all eating them nasty ass chitlins. If y'all eating them nasty ass chitlins, man, you are what you eat. Shit guts. <laughs> y'all eat that nasty ass chitlins? Talk about high blood pressure hereditary. Uh, uh, this and this is hereditary. And then all you got to do is ask them, well, what do you eat? Well, shoot, I eat the same thing. Grandma never get fed me. Hog mold, cow ass, pig feet, chitlin ass. No, nah, it ain't a vegetarian, motherfucker. Y'all just eating the same shit. Somebody got to wake up and stop eating that bullshit. <laughs> the one cousin that eat vegan and shit, they don't even like him. <laughs> Bitch ass nigga act like he better than us and shit. Motherfucker don't want to goddamn eat with grandma. Know you think he done moved to California? Think he too good now? Nah, stupid ass. Treat, treat them like Roscoe J. Yeah, Roscoe J. Uh huh. You done talk a whole generation of family feeding it to your kids and shit. Talking about it just passed down generation after generation. Yeah, that slave master passed down a diet plan to your ass generations ago, and you're still fucking following it. Motherfuckers talking about they don't like white supremacy. You motherfucker, you love this shit. You still do what the motherfucker did to you in slavery. Motherfucker cut over in a uh, pig. Something that eats slop shit and anything you put in front of it. And you gonna eat that shit? You gonna eat the guts of that shit. Food right in the goddamn stomach. And a pig will eat a dog. A pig will eat dog shit 
It'll eat a pamper. It'll eat goddamn. It'll eat your ass. You lay there long enough. And then you want to eat that shit, man? Please. You gonna make a lot of them mad. I ain't trying to make nobody mad. I'm just telling the damn truth. I'm just debunking some of these lies that them doctors be telling people. Yeah, it's just hereditary in your family. <laughs> Keep eating hog mog. <laughs> Go home and take this pill. That's gonna give you a side effect of clogging up your ass. <laughs> I go to my auntie house. I make sure I pick out what I would eat. What this guy is, auntie? I know you gonna cook some of that nigga shit. <laughs> shit that, I don't want none of that shit, auntie. You give me the regular shit. Give me the turkey. Give me the salad. I don't want that bacon bit. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Hereditary in my ass. I know, man, look here. When I switched over for that while, that year and a half, when I stopped eating steak, chicken, mm -hmm. all that shit, man, I lost got damn 60 pounds in 30 days just yeah. eating vegetables and, and drinking juices and all that shit. I lost 60 pounds in 30 days. Man. I was like, holy shit. I couldn't live two fucking pounds. <laughs> I was skinny as a Yeah. Everybody love to eat out now. So I can take pictures of the plate. <laughs> Piers, what I want to talk about side effect of clogging up your ass. <laughs> hey, but you eat roaches, though. How the fuck you know what I eat? Huh? Motherfucker, tell me I eat roaches. I eat your roach looking ass. <laughs> oh. Hey, it's how it's got their turkey day now. I feel, did that damn dog just break? The, what the fuck? What the fuck was that? Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna say, eating roaches. We don't even know each other. Hey, you talking about? It. Mm hmm. Uh huh. This bread good as fuck. Hey, you motherfuckers that's booking Charles and White, boy, y'all motherfuckers better order bulletproof vests when you book that motherfucker. I just saw him about to shoot up the whole set. <laughs> I say, damn. I had it on Wink Berserk. Yes, yes, yes. Just feed my baby. There shouldn't be no football games on yet. Yeah, man. I saw that. I thought it was a skit at first. I'm like, no, I'm just playing around. And I heard that shit go, whack it. And I was like, oh, hell no. Them motherfuckers are serious. <laughs> I, oh shit! I heard that motherfucker say "cock cock." I said, "That ain't this, this ain't joke time right here." I had to turn the video off. I don't want to see no shit like that. Right. And he Charleston racked that goddamn round in that gun. Oh. I say, "Shit!" Mm -mm -mm. This nigga need to get high. I don't know what the hell wrong with this nigga. As a matter of fact, let me roll up to that. Let me, let me roll up to that because I'm with that peace and love. I ain't with that energy. You know what I'm saying? I'm with that peace and love. Cowboys play the, the midget. What in the world? Hold on, let me pull this up. It says, 
Kwame, this old news, but why do y'all always let MJ get away with not speaking up for the black community? Uh, where was his voice for Kyrie Irving? He has the biggest influence and does nothing. Uh, I could easily answer that. That's they like his shoes. <laughs> that's who he always was. He yeah. Hey, he never, he never gonna say that. Jordan already spoke. He said Republicans and Democrats buy shoes. That means he's not gonna say a motherfucking thing to mess up the bag. He's not gonna get in his own way. Okay. And he Yeah, so and then if you do it, it look like you hate. It. Yeah, and then most people, if you say something about MJ, they just gonna attack you anyway. So it's a lose lose battle. But appreciate the super chat. But it's a it's a it's a lose lose battle. When you have when you get to the level of an MJ or a Shaq and, and Charles Barkley, LeBron, those guys gotta tow a certain line because they in business with the very same people that y'all talking about. So you can be like a revolutionary tongue, but they're going to have to say, yeah, I kind of, sort of, wait a minute, I can't agree with you no more. Because <laughs> they can't be doing, they ain't going to let you do business with them and got them talk shit about them now. They ain't going to work like that. And plus, Jordan is at a level of status where now he can tell you, go fuck yourself, and what you going to do about it? He owns a fucking team. And he's still gonna, you still gonna buy a damn shoe. What you nigga gonna burn all your Jordan? I ain't seen a damn thing. Jordan's been a part of almost every nigga award. And see, that's why they know they don't have to respect us. We have such a culture that's such a heavy consumer base that we don't make anything that we actually like that black people make. We only like the stuff that white people make, and we're gonna buy it regardless. So they don't give a damn about you getting mad. You ain't going to affect their money because you still got to go to the club to get some Boutang. You know, you trying to get some Boutang, you're going to go buy some Jordans. And if a young lady trying to get some, some dingers, she going to go buy lashes, hair, red bottoms. Red bottoms. It, well, she going to get you niggas to buy them. And you niggas going to have to buy purses, all kind of shit. So just to, just to date a girl, these niggas got to buy Birkin bags, Goddamn dinners, they got to buy all this shit. So shit, the dating gotta change too. Like, baby, we gotta goddamn go for walks or something. Yeah, let's walk on the beach. Fuck. I, I gotta go straight to Balenciaga, baby. I don't like the motherfucker. Fuck that broke ass shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck that broke ass shit. Fuck that broke ass shit. Oh, well, shit. You just try to make me make some white guy rich. So then I stay broke. And then we can't never build nothing because I got to keep buying stuff to go on your goddamn ragged ass. Yeah, you on the other team. She with them. If I can't take you out and show you that I'm a nice guy and that count for nothing, I got to buy you Birkin bags and shit. I can see if this motherfucker took me and say, let's buy some property together. This motherfucker talking about buy a fucking bag for herself. You selfish some bitch. <laughs> What the hell? Are, I can't even wear the bag now, time. You know what I mean? It ain't about you, man. Man, please. It, it, ain't, it ain't about me. No, it ain't about But then you don't need one got that money. All I can think of when I be looking at these young boys now, I be thinking about that movie. Oh, uh, Shell. That line he said in Shell. What line I'm thinking about? Yeah, you know it. Boy, your mama done fucked you up. Yeah, that motherfucker talking about emotional intelligence. What the fuck is that stupid ass? I don't know. You're going to get punched right in the damn jaw. Think about emotional you going to be around some motherfuckers that don't know how to think, trying to tell them emotional intelligence? That shit might work in a room full of women, but around these men, this is going to be the outcome. Shut your goddamn mouth. Yeah, nigga, right. nigga going to beat your mouth. I'm trying to tell you. Well, that's toxic. It's still gonna fucking happen. Right. Shit. Like women with the beautiful feet. What women with the beautiful feet? But we about to get into the topic now. Because I told y'all it was after these children. 
And see, Kanye fighting a deeper battle than we thought. Because Kanye kids is at risk. And that's why he's taking it so personal. Yeah, Kanye comes out as aggressive, angry, sometimes, sometimes belligerent. But then sometimes you hear those hitting gems, like when a man is crying out for the safety of his own seed. That's what I said since he was worried. Yeah. His kids in Hollywood and this over sexualized uh semen nature of this business in Hollywood. He basically is saying he feel like his kids in danger. Exactly. And if you look at the history of these goddamn on Kardashians, uh, a few of them have made a living doing some things, yeah. You got a legitimate goddamn reason. Or at least one that we know. But this don't make no sense what Balenciaga did. And how come there's not a long list of these A-list celebrities? LeBron, where LeBron at? He ain't scared for these children, these black children and no children? You talking about the dude that built the school? Yeah, the dude that built the school with cheering at and all that. You he he should be the main one speaking out against Balenciaga right now. You don't care. He got the care. He built the school for cheering. So LeBron James should be the first one to support no. canceling Balenciaga. But he ain't going to say a motherfucking thing. But every time the police or some bullshit or something that's wrong happened, he'll he'll overblow that and say he's scared to walk down the goddamn street. It's only about election time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about election time now. Yeah, How in the hell... Are they canceling Kanye? But why are they not canceling Balenciaga? Why is Balenciaga the owner or the CEO is in pictures with the mayor of New York? Why did they put these babies next to letters of the Supreme Court ruling? ruling? Goddamn... This shit don't make no sense. Why we have a soft touch on pedophilia? So in the hood where I come from, if a motherfucker found out that you was messing with kids and they got to you before the police got to you and you were still alive when the police got there, the police going to be dragging them Negroes and them ladies up off of you. They're going to be hitting you with everything they can find because that's the number one job of adults is to protect the children. It, it works in every animal kingdom, whether it's horses, uh, sheep, whatever. Animal, whatever. Yeah. They try to protect their young with the best they can. If it's an animal that don't fight, they try to hurry up, get them up and, and stand yeah, them up so they can run. If it's an animal that can fight, that bear will come back and eat up everything for them little bear cubs. A lioness will come tear through everything for them little lioness, them little uh, little lioness cubs. They chewing through walls for them goddamn little little lion cubs. You better not fuck with them. But us Americans now have to sit back and watch somebody play with our cheer. Faith keepers say, that's your ass, Mr. Postman. <laughs> He's damn right. That's what I'm used to. I'm used to a community. We keep saying black community, but I don't see one. And I'm going to say why. Community is supposed to build. Community, exactly. Community is together. Community is, 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 some, is striving for the same goal, which is to live in peace. And I don't see no peace in this so-called black community. I don't see no unity in this so-called black community because some of you motherfuckers was raised in the church and you know this bullshit wrong and your punk ass scared to say any damn thing. And I ain't going to say punk ass because I understand you got to feed your family. So let me not disrespect you. But at the same time, when you know your kids are going to be affected by this, then it ain't no, they can't cancel everybody. You can't be silent. 
I'm not a part of no goddamn community. You can, you can cancel me. I'm not a part of no groups. I've been saying this since I come to the internet. And that goes for black, white, any community, because if they're going to sit back, if everybody's going to sit back and watch this shit and don't say nothing, this ain't no motherfucking community. We all just some working sheeple who are afraid and we sit and be quiet so we can earn our little trinkets so we can buy our Mercedes. That's all that is. Just as bad as the motherfuckers who doing this shit. Yeah. We just as bad. Knowing that they taking this shit to them uh, schools for them kids. Knowing that they trying to change laws to get closer to these kids. But instead of doing something about it, we so busy trying to get close to the money. So that's why I say, in God we trust. We love that motherfucking money. That's that, that, that printed on our money in God we trust. Yeah, that in God we trust done turned to just a saying. This shit is printed on our money in God we trust, which is that money. That's what we love. They gave a few niggas money, and then now that's what niggas' biggest saying is to another nigga. Oh, bitch ass, broke ass nigga. Oh, broke ass, bitch ass nigga. Why white people making some money? Bringing up other white people, bringing up other white people, bringing up other white people. The no, Hispanic no, community, the ones they know ain't shit. right? The Hispanic community, they go get one house, bring over another Spanish person, and they come help build another house, bring over another Spanish woman. She come help cooking for all the men. Then they bring over another Spanish man. Everybody know how to work together except us niggas. All we want to do is be the first to say it. Yeah, be the only one to say. Yeah, yeah. I had the first goddamn new exclusive car. Yeah, I got the exclusives. I got the exclusive truck. I got the exclusive car. I got the exclusive everything. And I'm the first one to say it this. I'm the only one to say it that. Me, me, fucking me. Then somebody slap your bitch ass down, and then everybody back in shambles. So that's all what happened. Everybody want to be the man. Instead of just work together. You teach your kids not to kill my kids. I teach my kids not to kill your kids. You teach yours the, the, the level of respect, I teach mine. Right. And yes, your kids can be checked in public when they fucking up by adults. Adults are the roadmap. They can respectfully check my goddamn daughter or my son. They better not call me and say shit. The first thing I'm going to say is, what was you doing? What was you saying? Because I done been checked by some uh, adults. I was out there cursing like a sailor. When I first got away from the house, I've been hearing that rap song. About 13, I'm rapping, cursing like hell. The lady heard me. Hey, boy, what you doing making all that cursing? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. You know, I knew I was wrong. So uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I ain't really turn around and say, fuck you, old bitch. Yeah, that's what they're doing, that they doing now. These little young kids. Because the mamas will be uh, the mamas will be telling them, don't you say shit to my son. Don't you say so no, 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 no. My mama ain't never said no shit like that. Now, I taught you a, a, a level of manners and you better show them manners every motherfucker where you go. And every time I slipped up, so an adult could check me and I would allow it. I would say, okay, I'm sorry, because I know I'm wrong. Fuck, I'm going to argue with an adult when you know you're wrong. Ain't nobody wrong with No, these little motherfuckers. You ain't my motherfucking mama. Fuck you. That, that's the go-to. So I thought the village supposed to raise the kid. How the hell you going? How the hell the village gonna raise the kid if the kid shooting up the goddamn village? As soon as you say something, one of them little motherfuckers in the in the village, they got Uzis and shit. Hey, look here, young man. Let me give you some wisdom. <laughs> Shut up, old nigga. <laughs> Who the fuck gonna talk to these little motherfuckers? Tell that child to go pick that switch. Yeah, yeah. They, go, they got a switch for you. Yeah, you tell a child to pick a switch if you want to. Yeah, they got a switch. That motherfucker gonna pull out that goddamn Glock 40 uh, switch. I got a switch for you, old nigga. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> i show you a switch. Oh, OG my ass. Don't nobody tell me nothing. That's These little young niggas moving with that Kanye energy. You can't tell me nothing. Before you get that money. I bet you them young niggas got a switch bigger than you old motherfuckers now. 
<laughs> they had that gun doing the money there. Da -da. Be the whole thing, yeah. Da -da. I don't know, man. You got to teach. If somebody was to see my kids out, you can say what you want about me. If somebody was to see any one of my kids out and you check them on some bad behavior, you ain't going to get shot. Mm -hmm. You check them on some bad behavior, you're not going to get met with a disrespectful tongue. You check them on some bad behavior, you ain't going to hear nothing else but, okay, I'm sorry. How many motherfuckers raising their kids like that? You tell them once some of these motherfucking kids anything. Bitch ass nigga, I'll kill you. I'm gonna go get my daddy. I'm gonna go get my mama. You can't go get me. Not against no adult that ain't put their hands on you. You can't come get me. What did you do first? Then we then I might I might come then. Cause sometimes adults can get out of pocket, but at first I need to know what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some of these kids don't accept the checking. You know, I, I taught mine, accept this checking. If an adult saying something to you nine times out of ten, it's because your little young ass is, is putting yourself in an adult place. And you're supposed to get checked by an adult. Nigga, that's how it's supposed to go. That's how the community can help raise the kid. If the men and the women in the community point out and say things to, uh, to the people who are doing things wrong in the community. The white folks that do that, we call them Karen. And some of them just be fucking around. They be doing too much. But we need a level of Karens. We need people to point out shit that's going on that's wrong. Because we know we be dead ass motherfucking wrong. Sometimes. We be dead ass motherfucking wrong sometimes. But I'm, you know, I'm probably on the chopping block to get canceled now too. Because, you know. Anytime you say any motherfucking thing, cancel that nigga. He, he against the community. You can say, stop killing each other, nigga. You dead ass wrong over there. Oh, man, that nigga talking about their black community, man. Got there, man. Cancel that nigga, man. He talking about us. So wait a minute. I'm telling you not to kill each other. And you want to cancel me and not to kill us. You nigga, that dying to kill each other. You dying to kill each other that much that you want to cancel and get anybody out the way that's stopping you from killing. Anybody that'll talk against niggas killing niggas, they against the community because they talking. This shit don't make no sense. This shit don't make no sense. How the hell are you gonna tell me not to kill a nigga? What else I'm supposed to do? <laughs> I really, I really think, I really think these motherfuckers really. Uh, just love killing each other. I don't think they know what else to do. Yeah, you gonna tell me I can't kill one of these niggas, man? Shit. That's, that's where we live. The people that's putting up there all that ethical bullshit they talking about are the worst scumbag. Scumbag, scumbag nice talking some bitch in the world. All this ethical talk to just a certain group. Uh huh. Because you know what it is. But when you go back and check their line and where they come from and see the type of business they do. Then you understand a little bit more. Mm -hmm. really? Fuck you gonna fuck you gonna tell me I can't kill one of these niggas, man. This how this how these dudes be in a rap song. Kill him, kill him, kill the dude, the nigga, the nigga, kill one of these niggas, 40 for one of these niggas. It's just every song. Then think about what they sell in our generation. Well, this younger generation. It's nothing but sex. It's nothing but gun. Money, murder. Sex, money, murder. That's all this is. This shit don't make no sense. Our music industry is nothing but sex, money, and murder. That's all the top rappers and the top singers talk about. And I don't like hearing none of that shit. That's what America would do. How come in some good white songs I can listen to and it make you feel good? It's upbeat. They let them do some hip hop songs that's upbeat. They ain't talking about killing. There's some good black ones. And there's some good black ones out there. I, I listen you to a couple other that. dudes. You ain't gonna hear that most on the radio. Jagged Edge got a new song out. Yeah, I, I was just listening to Jagged Edge's new song. Yeah, let me plug Jagged Edge. Hold on. What's that yeah, new song? 
inseparable or some shit like that. Let me see what I've been listening to. Well, it's a couple of them rappers out there. They on the right. They on the right track. Yeah, it ain't all, and nothing I'm saying is all. You know what I mean? But you don't got to say that to men, most for the most part. What? Not all, not all. We understand. That. We understand that it's some ragged ass nigga. We get it. Inseparable. Yeah, that's what I'm listening to. Jagged Edge, Inseparable. That's a cool ass song. See, I like shit like that. Shit make you want to go, goddamn, go around the fair sex, get you a hookah, and chill out and relax and just enjoy yourself. Some of you niggas listening to death music. Yeah, energy always tore up. You just listen to this going to the club, catch it outside, spin the block, knock his dome off. <laughs> catch him outside with the honey clip, hit the switch. Hey, you listen to that type of shit going to the club. Then as soon as you get to the club, you all been amped up about shooting at a dude. I was at a little house party, and I'm talking about these some good people. Lawyers and teachers and doctors. These some smart people. But the music that these people were listening to, I was offended. I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? I say, man, this man... These are teachers that are influencing the next generation's minds, but for some reason they listen to a killing them, nigga, killing them, nigga, nigga, nigga. I'm like, what in the fuck? Them the ones be doing the TikTok videos in the class with the terms. Man, that kind of music. I don't get it, bro. I don't get it. Oh my! Hey, look, them niggas will tell you when I was in D.C., L.A., and all that. They used to be like, man, why you always want to listen to slow music and R&B and shit going to the club? What the fuck we going to the club for? Nigga, I don't know what you going to do, but I'm going for these ladies. Right. And nigga, you want to listen to songs that talk about fighting and shit. That's going to end the party. Now, I don't want to fight at this motherfucker. I, I want this shit to be love making in this club. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't put on these. I ain't put on these goddamn uh, uh, Samuel Jackson pretty ass shoes to go in here and goddamn scuff them up and fight and all this dumb shit. No. I'm listening to I'm a flirt. Soon as I see you walking in the club, I'm a flirt. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to that. Them niggas talk, man, come on, man. I said, okay, what y'all want to listen to? Man, they putting it all, bust a nigga head, shut the club, shoot the club up. Bust a nigga head, slap a hoe, shoot the club up. I say, damn, I like MJD and them too. But I don't want to hear this shit going to the club. That's some shit you work out on. Yeah, like, nigga. That's what I listen to. But I don't want to hear this shit going to the club. We. We actually go into the club, and you want to put me in the mindset of slap a nigga, bust a nigga head, shoot the club up. All the things I'm hoping not happen at the club that I'm finna go to. You want me to listen to that on the way to the club? No. I'm I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like going home now. Yeah, yeah y'all niggas, y'all can go out. Shit. <laughs> yeah, I used to be the party pooper. I'm, Cause I'm playing shit that is gonna get you in the mood. You know, I don't want to hear all this stupid ass. You niggas want to fight tonight? Like, what's wrong with you niggas, man? Nah, I don't get that shit, man. Maybe that's how I took these niggas gal. <laughs> I ain't want to listen to that shit. I get your girl in the car. We playing slow music. We playing something that, yeah. And it's something going to catch your eye because I would play them R&B fast, you know, little bangers. I would play the little slow banger, the old school shit, and they mix it up. Some of them are scrim. Oh, man, I don't want to hear this. How do you? They used to hear that dumb shit. Right. And then a few of them oldies catch their ear. They, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I knew you ain't know what you wanted. Yeah, you sit back and listen to this, girl. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Put your seat warm on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these niggas listening to head bust of music. It's just me and my niggas. I'm with my niggas. All my niggas. They put that little way on. Oh, damn, I miss my dogs. I'm like, you miss my dog, nigga. We see each other all day. What the fuck you mean you miss your dog, nigga? How many? How many hours in the day you want to spend, nigga? What's wrong with these niggas? Always want to hang out with each other all goddamn day. I never understand that shit. The nigga hoop together. <laughs> goddamn, the, went to the mall together. And then they want to listen to, damn, I miss my dog. Men and I club hopping. Men and I we were growing trees. Men and I we were hustling. Damn, I miss my dog. I'm like, okay, I like that song too. But I, I listen to that when I'm working out and shit. Yeah, I listen to it when I'm, when I'm just chilling around the house or something. Uh, you know, doing some push-ups and shit. But I don't want to listen to this shit going to the club with you, nigga. Shit. 
That's why I started going to the club with just all female. One nigga and all female. They be like, I mean, how you get all these goddamn girls? Because I ain't stupid like you. You buying bottles. You buying bottles for a bunch of niggas. What's wrong with me buying bottles for a bunch of ladies? Right. I think I'm winning more so than you. Right. You ain't going to get nothing out of them niggas but a bad attitude and they wish they was you. Some of these girls that I buy this bottle for, they might want to say thank you. <laughs> yeah, they might they might want to come back. You know what I mean? Shit. Hey, look at not your damn minute. He know I'm telling the truth. Shit, I don't want to listen to that bullshit. You the killer music going to the goddamn club. That's that used to be the biggest argument. Man, fuck that. I'm taking two cars. I'm not going nowhere with you, nigga. Right. Hey, listen to all this killer shit. Bring out six girls, seven girls, and they gotta hear nothing but but niggas arguing and shooting each other. Man, I, but now this younger generation of girls, they rap to the shit. They love this shit. They rap and catch a body. I'll be like, damn, let me get away from your little thug ass. You little thug, you little thug chick. Get the fuck away from you. <laughs> but let me get to the damn story. I ain't get the hell over, man. I, I can sit here and laugh and roast all day. Oh, I heard a bitch ass nigga say, hey, I heard a bitch ass nigga say, Hey, he not intelligent enough. This dumb down. Never mind. I ain't can't even make that joke. But this dumb turtle, slow talking motherfucker, gonna tell me I'm not intelligent enough to hold a conversation without somebody else's video. Bitch ass nigga had just because y'all tried to take down my whole goddamn channel. But it's videos on that motherfucker. Where it's just me. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I broke the internet just me. I don't know what the fuck. This nigga is the dumbest motherfucker. Like, God dang, boy, this nigga dumb. I broke the internet in a fucking truck and in a garage, but I ain't smart enough to hold a conversation by myself. What kind of jealousy is that? That you got a veil over your eyes to the truth. That's why you don't argue with a fool. Yeah, I, yeah I, that's why I won't say these bitch ass nigga name. I don't give a fuck about what they talking about. He clown ass nigga, man. Just every day he waking up again. Yeah. One nigga went from out of town. I, I'm flying back in to get on your ass. Bitch ass nigga. First of all, you better stop thinking about getting on my ass. Oh, yeah. yeah. First of all, stop thinking about that, bitch ass nigga. That's number one. And all you doing is talking shit on the internet, bitch. We don't know each other. <laughs> so I don't pay you no never mind. Oh, hell no. Fuck you, nigga. Talking about these niggas really think they do something. Hell no. People think about you. Yeah, the whole trip. <laughs> Motherfuckers sending me pictures of Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown, look at me. Kwame, look at me. I thought you was on vacation, bitch. No. Sound like a girl that can't let go, like that won't be back. Yeah, I got a new man. You want to see us? Yeah, we on the rock over here. Shit, bitch, I don't give a fuck where you at, hope. Shit. <laughs> these, motherfuckers, these, these motherfuckers here crazy as hell, boy. Yeah, I got him scared, y'all. He feeling that pressure. Ain't feeling no motherfucking pressure. Just bigger and better things, you know. I don't want to be a nigga like you, waiting on another man and happy to meet men and run with men and hang with men and get flued out by men and shit. Oh, Dude, I want to fly myself out, bitch ass nigga. So I can't be on the internet all day. Yeah, you bitch ass nigga want to try to slow up the internet. So in real life, though, I've been telling you nigga real life, but I ain't talking my business on the internet no more. You niggas trying to goddamn stop everything I do behind the scene. So I less talking and I just been doing a little more walking. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be quiet. I'm just be quiet. Yeah, I'm just be quiet and just keep doing me. Yeah, yeah. And then it's going to be show and tell. Just a game I play when I want to say I love you. Hey, show and tell. Just a game I play. Well, y'all thought I just went to church. Hey, let me stop for all these ladies come back in this chat and shit. Let me stop being me because I said I was going to dumb down. I'm dumbing myself down for about six, seven months and shit like that. Cause Man, I've been dealing with all kind of, uh-uh. Everybody mad at me, but uh-uh. I want to let these niggas leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Look at your thoughts in the car. Good morning. Good morning. 
So I these boots are made for walking, and that's just what I'll do. And one of these days, these boots are going to walk all over you. Yes, Lord. Are we old? <laughs> It's shit. I'd rather, I rather it's better to be old than dead. Yeah, yeah. These little young niggas tell old ass niggas. Yep, yeah. I show sure is. Get there. How them old folks used to tell us, get there. Shit. I, I saw. I saw a dude. I went to this little historical. Uh, it was. I think it was in uh, Austin, Austin, Texas. There's a little food spot where a woman been cooking that good old grits and stuff for years, mm-hmm. and so. Um, this dude was like, yeah, man. He said, how old are you? I said, I'm 40. I said, I'm an old man. I'm 40. He said, you ain't an old man yet. I just made 63 years old. I'm an old man. But I, I look young. I feel good. He did look young. I didn't know he was 63. But uh, I said, shoot, I don't never diss that no more. I said, I'm trying to make it to 63. I'm trying to make it to you and beyond. He said, hey, that's the right attitude. So, yeah, man. He said, keep your stress level down. He said, you see me, I left my wife at home. Now, she go call me too many times. That's why I left my phone in the car. <laughs> he had me uh, dying laughing. He said, I've been married 32 years. He said, keep your stress level down. You see me, I left my wife at home. And I knew she go call me 30 times talking about, did you forget this? Did you forget that? He said, that's why I left my phone in the car. <laughs> you know the game. <laughs> you know the game. That's how you stay mad. There's some shit she going to come with that you ain't going to understand. But you just got to goddamn learn how to circumvent that. Hold on, y'all. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, conscious God, son, I'm going to keep kicking draws and ass now. Yes, sir. But see, right now, I got a team of people that's, that's tallying up and working. They conjugating together. You know, bitch ass nigga said I'd have used that word wrong until they had to look it up and shit. Stupid ass motherfucker trying to prove everything I say wrong. He said conjugate. That ain't even a fucking word. I'm like, huh? Uh, he said I was using it in the wrong sentence. The king of logic, motherfucker. Uh, but okay. But, um, you know, I never professed to be the smartest motherfucker in the world, but I know conjugate, you, you coming together, grouping together, but, you know, it is what it is. A uh, bunch of these whole ass niggas coming together, grouping together, pretty much watching everything I do, copying everything I do, trying to do whatever I do before I do it or listening to what I say. And so I realized that this person was studying, not YouTube, but they were studying me. And so now their whole MO and page is to do what I do, but try to do it on a bigger level and then try to get everybody around YouTube to shout it out as if they created the wheel when the things that they're doing have already done. That they just came to try to sabotage it and say I'm this and I'm that and I'm all these things, but I can't wait. I can't wait. See, this shit with me is just from the heart. It's just me. So I can all you can't fake being me. You know what I mean? You can't. I'm gonna always come up with something new and different. I'm just not gonna tell nobody about it. See, these niggas just waiting to be bird fed because no originality. I wish I would have had a push of a network and all that shit these niggas got. And these niggas got to come down and watch a nigga like me or talk to me stupid and try to force me to do something instead of talking to me like a man, like a stand upright in a wreck and the next to you instead of you try, acting like I'm behind you, nigga. And then we could have made some shit happen. But no, niggas want to talk and act like men ain't men. And I can't fuck with niggas like that. No, I can't do that. Anybody that's ever been around me, you a man first. I don't give a fuck about what's in your pocket. I don't want none of it. I don't give a fuck about how many jump shots you made because some niggas don't shoot jump shots and they still grown ass men. But a lot of these clowns, uh, they life is based on some fucking fake ass fantasy of a career it means you're better than somebody. When in reality, a motherfucker will beat your ass talking like that in real life. Real life, don't nobody give a fuck that you shot no shot. You ain't shooting no more. Uh, so I treat people how you're supposed to be treated in real life. I respect those who respect me, and I disrespect any motherfucker who disrespect me. And some people ain't worth the time. So I walk off from a disrespectful bitch here and there too. 
<laughs> God damn sure walk off. Yeah. Sometimes you ain't even worth the time. I'm gone. Straight like that. A lot of you, a lot of you young cats need to learn that. Just walk the fuck off. Some of you niggas changing. Y'all niggas be having peaceful, good lives, going good. And because one hater try to put a monkey wrench in your shit, nigga, you got to avoid shit. Do you hit every goddamn, like I hit one tire in the road. That shit came out of nowhere. It flung right up under my car. But do you know how many tires I avoided in the road? Look at some of these hating ass niggas as tires. Some of these niggas you just got to avoid. And some of these bitches, and you got to run the fuck over. I get it. But it's going to cause you some damage. Just like my car in the shop right now. Just like talking to some of these worthless ass niggas. Got some people believing in. Some people was just waiting on something to believe. So it is what it is. But it's going to be show and tell. <laughs> just a game I play with I want to say. I'm going to leave the rest out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because this motherfucking Thanksgiving, and I'm finna be old Sparky. You ever heard of old Sparky? Oh, indeed. I'm finna be old Sparky over here. And I'm feeling good. I got a lot to be thankful for. Um, look here. All say it with me. You know what that is? Y'all breathing. I don't want to hear shit about no, the light bill ain't paid, and I owe a little bit on something. I owe a little bit. Don't worry about that. If you're doing this right here. You got time to figure it out. There you go. Yeah, so don't worry about that. Stop stressing all the time. Y'all motherfuckers be saying all these God, Christian shit, but you be stressing the whole time. I thought you say God ain't never there when you want him, but he right on time. Ain't that the saying? Then how come motherfuckers be crying so much, acting like life over, but then they, they'll do all kind of shit to fuck it up, and then boom, somebody will help them, or they'll figure their way out of it. But they done did some stupid shit that done put them in a deeper hole when all they had to do was just be still. Didn't he say, be still? Peace be still. Peace be still. So that means when things are going wrong, shut the fuck up. Slow down a little bit. But no, what some of you do when things are going wrong, you motherfucker want to go to the club. You want to bring somebody else some misery because you miserable, but you trying to front. Cause you know social media is still popping, so you gotta go put your post on Facebook, acting like your goddamn bills ain't due, acting like goddamn your house ain't late. You just gotta still have fun. You gotta still look like you got it. You gotta still pop off at the club. Sometimes you gotta stay at home. Cause guess what? It's gonna shake back. It's all in the games, the ups and downs. Remember, young Jeezy told you that. Oh, I forgot. On the internet, you always up. I forgot. On the internet, everybody up. They always up. Nigga ain't never had a bad day. Nigga ain't never got his ass whooped. I be hearing these niggas. I ain't never lost a fight. Man, I got my ass whooped plenty of time. I'm be the first nigga to tell you, nigga. The reason why I can whip us uh, some ass now is because I had to first learn how to get my ass whipped. <laughs> yeah. I know how much I can take because I done been damn near my head been knocked off. I've been getting hit by big niggas all my life, see. And it's been some short niggas that hit harder than a mule kick. So, yeah, the reason why I can goddamn hell them up, and the reason why I'm not in a rush to fight is because I know there's some motherfuckers out there that hit hard. Yeah, you talking about? Yeah. Fuck out of here. You niggas talking about you in a rush to get fight somebody and you ain't getting paid for it? That's why it'd be the last resort. It, it usually be, uh-huh, okay. What'd you say now? You sure about that? Okay, well, fuck it then, nigga. Let's do it. <laughs> but it's a build up for me. I don't want to goddamn fight. What the fuck I want to do all that for? Yeah, be still and know that I am God. Tell him, Mama Pineapple. Oh, beautiful red with a dread. Ooh, ooh. Mama Pineapple, don't let me find out you a catfish now. I've been seeing some catfishes up here now. You're a beautiful uh, woman. Don't let me find out you a catfish. And your dreads look like mine and shit. And they ain't all crisp like that. <laughs> uh, I haven't lost one, but my mama said there's always somebody out there for you. So don't get it twisted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's shit. 
See, you must ain't had no older brothers. See, I lost sometimes because see, I'm gonna try your ass. I don't give a fuck how old I was that young nigga that I thought I was big. I was because I was the same size as some of my brothers, but that shit don't mean nothing. <laughs> when you young and doofy, sometimes you just you gotta learn. So I learned that size don't matter. I, I learned that got to have experience in in in, in doing it. <laughs> That's one of the biggest teachers. You know, you can bring a big gargantuan motherfucker out somewhere that ain't really know how to fight, and you put somebody in there with them that's smaller that actually know how to fight, and you will see the funniest thing ever. You will see a big grown man cry. Yeah, you'll see a big grown man cry. Salute, J. Will. <laughs> Look at John. What's up, bro? Cut them off ASAP. You ain't lying. There's some heavy handed niggas out there. You be happy when somebody bring up. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> he said, you ain't lying. There's some heavy-handed niggas out there. You'd be happy when somebody break up the fight. Don't know how many more of them kind of licks you can take. Well, I'm talking about some niggas that can hit hard as a mule kick. Well, I'm trying to, they waiting to beat somebody. Listen, there's some short niggas out there, about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, They've been practicing and praying and just waiting a nigga over 6'2 trial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they just waiting. All my life I've been waiting to beat somebody up tall. Yeah, so no, man. I ain't with all that shit. But just like goddamn, uh, what you call it, found out. The, uh, Andre Edisander. Edisander, when he fight that, uh, when he fought that one dude, that he caught him with that left in the last round. Oh, no. That boy that beat him up before, Peore. Yeah, see, you got to be perfect, though. Because all it takes is one. Blink. He was winning that fight. He was winning that fight, he, but he couldn't be perfect. He needed to be perfect for another three minutes. And he needed to keep ducking from them lefts and sliding back and ducking. He should have grappled more. He was winning that. Boy, when he got hit again, blink. Light up. Yeah, I talked about uh, the Shaq and Dwight Howard situation. I think that's wrong. I think we got to remember this is a game that we're playing out of since we were kids that's that you love it, it ain't nothing to do with no level of competition and all that other crap those still professional athletes nobody from the ymca i mean maybe one person you got to go to one of them cities that's just known for ball maybe philly new york some places in georgia that might can go overseas and, and hoop but for them for the most part you ain't gonna just walk on no protein no protein now you don't disrespect a man like that that man out there trying to make a comeback, he's playing well, he's in shape, he committed to doing something, and you got to respect that. 36, 37 years old, still able to run and jump at a high level, that's a level, him looking the way he looked is a level of professionalism that most don't have. So you got to salute that. I don't know what it's all, I don't know what they riff about, but I just thought that was corny. I'm putting my turkey on at 12 you put your turkey on at 12 oh no man we'd have been eating up all the sides then because how long it's gonna take your turkey to cook because we gotta have a turkey by the one o'clock game it ain't gonna be done in no hour yeah you supposed to cook go start your turkey at 4 a.m have that thing on 250 265 and cook it all the way through the night you could have woke up to a nice done turkey yeah and i'm gonna teach you how to cook a turkey your turkey ain't gonna be done to, to dinner time <laughs> we probably be eating turkey with the football game. Mm -hmm. Look at me putting my two cents in somebody's house. Yeah, they probably don't even watch football. Four hours. How long it take you to cook your turkey? How, what temperature you cook your turkey at? See, I cook my turkey slow, and then I turn it up at the end. I, I cook my turkey real slow. Yeah. I'm talking about, oh, hell no, going to be dry. No, my turkey ain't never dry. 
Mm -mm. Then I got one of them big green eggs. I can cook a turkey in there. Everybody try to cook their turkey at 350. I'm frying two turkeys this year, so I ain't I ain't baking no turkey, but when I did cook the turkey, I put it in low 265. And then I turned that thing up to 350 just for the browning. I just wanted to cook all the way through and get it moist. Yeah, yeah that's it. But uh, I had a turkey in that green egg. That green egg, that, that thing hit different, boy. I burnt one because I didn't know what the hell I was doing because that thing gets super hot. And then once I got it down, that thing was crazy good. Yeah, I, you got to know what you You got to practice on that thing, boy. That green egg get hot as I don't know what, boy. But my neighbor got my green egg right now. Oh, yeah, the fried turkey. I fell in love with the fried turkey. I put that mustard on that thing. I seasoned up that mustard. And I rubbed that mustard all over the bunky of it. And they're all on the back, the wings and things. Stick it on down in there. And I look at the weight of the turkey, multiply that by three to get my time right. And I drop that thing in there in between 325 and 350. And I drop that thing on in there. And when that turkey come out, uh, somebody will steal the bone of it. It don't be nothing left. So that's why I'm going to try to do two this year. So that way I can have me some. I want leftover turkey. And every time I do it, ain't no leftover. Yeah, that mustard, uh, uh, it'll crisp up on the outside real hard, so you'll have a nice uh, crunch to it, but it'll lock in that juice in the inside. Yep, yep, yep. Guess you got to stay home and use your oven. But let me put this Tucker Carlson thing on real quick. Because I know y'all running out of patience. Y'all got to cook and all that. I don't know. And plus, this will give me time to hit my swagger dad. Y'all see that face? That's a face that everybody hate. I don't hate him. Because it's not about hate. It's about truth and and anybody and everybody is right at sometimes and everybody and anybody can be wrong sometimes but uh on this particular case i think candace owens and uh tucker carlson exposed something that people are going to ignore because we are trained to ignore but i'm gonna put this up until they get to the good parts because I know they got guys talking about they're going to flag my channel every time they think about it and all this stuff. So we're going to make sure we have fair use guidelines. And we're going to turn this thing down. We're going to put some music on. Is that too loud? I hope not. A walk with Tucker Carlson. It is a stable of so called conspiracy theory. At the highest levels of politics and finance, there is a shadowy cabal of pedophiles who use their power to hide the crimes they commit against children. That people think that sounds pretty far out to us, too dark and strange to be true. And of course, we are not obviously endorsing that idea. On the other hand, you can kind of see why people might believe it. Jeffrey Epstein, for example. Epstein continued to dine with business moguls and heads of state long after he was arrested for having sex with minors. How did he do that? Why did nobody say anything? Why did people keep eating with him? Well, at the very least, we can conclude based on the evidence that there is a tolerance for pedophilia among some, among the most powerful in our society, a tolerance that you would not find in, say, your average middle-class American family. Some of the rich really are different that way. That's clearly true. And in case you need more evidence of that, consider Balenciaga. 
Wensiaga is what they call a luxury brand. Wensiaga is a company that sells $1,100 sneakers and cotton sweatshirts for $1,500 bucks to people who've literally run out of things to buy. You're probably not doing your back to school shopping at Balenciaga, but some people apparently are. So this week, Balenciaga rolled out a new ad campaign on Instagram, and the selling point of the ads was sex with children. One photograph showed a very young girl lying. Can somebody tell me what the hell is going on here? <clears throat> is Blenciaga gonna be canceled? Fuck just asking. We need to cancel these some bitches. But you know what? They got too many endorsement deals with our rappers. And our rappers got the minds of these young people. So Blenciaga can't be canceled. Let's stop fooling ourselves, people. They know they can get away with this shit and ain't nobody gonna say nothing. Yes, fair use, fair use. This is a reaction to something that, in my opinion, is sick and something that don't get enough attention and something that our celebrities are too coward to talk about. They'll turn their head and act like they ain't see this one. They won't tweet about this one. Now that's scary. Every person that has children. Why is this baby face down like this? Is it nap time? But all these symbols, these symbolism around somebody's baby. Who's the parent of this baby? But then the only, only thing people can say when Tucker Carson point this thing out. Oh, it's Tucker Carson. Oh, I don't listen to no Tucker Carson. Yeah, he's just a hateful son of a bitch. So you can't listen to him when he's showing you with video evidence what they're doing to kids. We can cancel all the other bullshit, but we don't cancel stuff that make the most sense, like the protection for our kids. Face down on a couch with candles, empty wine glasses, and a dog collar on a coffee table in front of her. Another picture showed the same girl, a toddler, holding a teddy bear dressed in sexual bondage gear, including a leather harness. And then, in case you... What in the holy fuck? What in the holy majoli? This has been Lenciaga. Got What is the sexual bondage with the kid for? Why wasn't this an adult? Why is it a kid? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have gave a damn if it's an adult with a teddy bear with a bondage. Why is there a little innocent looking kid there with a teddy bear with bondage on? Man. We got to take all these kids out of these school systems. Shit, they can shut down the school. We can take our vouchers and create our own goddamn school. This shit here is sick. No one of these kids can't read or write or any damn thing at grade level. Majority of these kids can't read or write at grade level, but they know all about bondage and all this other shit. When the fuck is going to be educating them? Why can't we have STEM programs in school? So we're going to have less educated kids knowing about bondage and, and and man this shit crazy as fuck you missed the point we're for pedophilia balenciaga another picture made it explicit that picture showed pages from a supreme court opinion that struck down a law designed to fight child pornography whoever staged the photo shoot made certain to include a portion of that opinion that used the word sex or sexual four times and of course that was not an accident Balenciaga wanted you to notice. Wow. So that's why all these bitch ass YouTubers come at me. They come at me, but they got Balenciaga 
coming at these children and all these niggas just sit here and talk about me all day and they can't talk about this story? These motherfuckers got the pages where it says sex in it. Wow. Wow. Happy Thanksgiving, people. <laughs> so this seemed like a big story to us, as we told you last night. Here you have a major international retail brand promoting kiddie porn and sex with children, and not promoting it subtly, but right out in the open. No healthy society can tolerate that, and in fact, none ever have tolerated it. There's never been a time in American history where pedophilia was considered anything other than the worst thing, the most horrifying crime imaginable. Pedophiles famously get killed in prison because even murderers consider them immoral. That's how out of bounds it is and has always been to sexualize children. It's totally unacceptable. But apparently, it's not unacceptable anymore. Academics have redefined child molesters as minor attracted persons. And the point, of course, is to send the message that actually it's not that big a deal. It's just a different kind of love. So maybe not surprisingly, given that trend, apart from a few isolated exceptions in the American media, almost all outlets completely ignored Balenciaga's kitty porn ad campaign. There was not a single story about it in the New York Times this morning, or in Jeff Bezos' Washington Post, or on CNN or NBC. There was no talk of an investigation or a boycott. The usual outrage, mer outrage merchants stayed completely silent because they weren't outraged. Balenciaga ultimately issued a statement saying it was going to punish the photographer who did the shoot like it was the photographer's fault and they didn't know about it. And after that... And so wait a minute. You mean to tell me America let them get away, Balenciaga get away with saying they gonna punish the photographer that they hired to do the shoot, that they told what they wanted in the shoot, that you have to sign off on before you put up this stuff. Yeah, they call them minor attracted person. Wow. And this is the type of stuff you can't speak on. This is the type of stuff they don't want you to speak on or you're in trouble. Speaking about this, I'm in trouble. Somehow I did something wrong. I'm the bad guy. Mm -mm -mm. That the story effectively died. And that means that the CEO of Balenciaga, a man called Cedric Charbit, will not become a social pariah for what his company has just done. He will continue, just as Jeffrey Epstein continued, to enjoy his busy social life totally unpenalized with his many fabulous celebrity friends. Here he is, for example, with the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, who looks very excited to be with him. Now, we found that picture, by the way, in less than a minute online. Yet, as far as we know, apart from us on this show, no one has asked Eric Adams about it, and it's likely that nobody ever will. And the reason is simple. The media have no interest in covering the sexualization of children. Their interest, and it's a very intense interest, tellingly so, is in destroying anyone who complains about the sexualization of children, or who even notices it. Noticing it, they tell us, is an attack on the LGBT community. So the assumption here, their assumption, apparently, is that gay people are in favor of molesting kids, and of course, in favor of performing general mutilation on minors. But that's absurd. No normal person is for this, gay or not. It's not anti-gay to oppose kitty porn, or to feel horror at the fact that doctors are cutting the breasts off of healthy teenage girls. These are crimes, and most gay people think they're crimes. Why wouldn't they think that? Protecting children from adults who want to sexually exploit them is a basic human instinct, and it's a noble instinct. And yet NBC News is doing its best to redefine that instinct as a crime. Yesterday, NBC brought on its law enforcement expert, by the way, a former assistant director of the FBI, to warn viewers that anyone who complains about the sexualization of children will be punished by the legal system, will be sued into bankruptcy and destroyed. Watch this. There was going to be a drag brunch the next day at Club Q. And uh, that's a way to get kids to see, hey, look, it's a person doesn't necessarily look like the people that you see every day at the store or whatever. Um, but these are real these are real people with lives and emotions. They like the same stories that you do. There's nothing sexualized about it. But every time there's one of those now, the Proud Boys show up because there's an account 
on the internet called Libs of TikTok that's been pushed by, you know, Tucker Carlson and uh, the Babylon Bee and the far right. Tucker in particular seems fixated on this anti-queer panic. In addition to his diatribes against drag shows, he's platformed anti-trans activists, used particularly vicious and extreme rhetoric to attack children's hospitals for providing trans youth with medical care. If he's a consumer of the people we just rattled off, from Lauren Boebert to Tucker Carlson, let's get it out. Let's get it out at trial. Let's expose it for what it is, name it and shame it. He's a consumer of these people, and those people should, should face civil consequences from the victims. Oh, so the former assistant director of the FBI calling for, quote, civil consequences against anyone Now you guys see how this new world order is going to happen. Uh, to me, anytime you say something against something that the people want to push, um, they're going to attack your finances. So if they have all digital money, it's very easy to do. So then you speak out. And you could be easily block your account, be easy, whatever they wanted to do. So that's crazy. So if somebody don't agree with you or if somebody don't agree with kitty porn and somehow they're against a whole group, I thought there was age limits on things for a reason. God bless America. But they got picks. They got picks on who they want to be mad at, what they want to be mad at, and how they divvy out punishment. Who doesn't like the sexualization of children? If you complain about it, you're responsible for the murders that other people commit. Hmm, is that in the legal code? No, it's not. But NBC News is doing its very best to add it. MSNBC has spent the last two days suggesting that because he signed a bill banning teachers from sexualizing kindergartners, Ron DeSantis is somehow tied to a mass shooter in Colorado. Earlier this year, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis infamously signed into law what critics have called the Don't Say Gay Bill, which presents, prevents some teachers from even discussing the existence of gay and trans folks. When you have a Don't Say Gay Bill in the state of Florida, for instance, mm -hmm. or when Ron DeSantis wants to send the police to investigate drag shows. The Don't Say Gay Bill in Florida is certainly something that helps add to his national political profile. Um, but one thing is clear is they just want to continue demonizing folks and otherizing people. They started moving in the spring to LGBTQ people. Specifically, they, they were really excited about the Don't Say Gay Bill um, in Florida. So if you don't want a kindergarten teacher to talk to your kindergartner about sex, you're anti-gay? Hmm. Ron DeSantis is the spiritual father of a mass murder in Colorado? Really? No matter how you feel about Ron DeSantis or about sex, it's not plausible. In fact, it's ridiculous. Yet they keep saying it. And the question is, why do they keep saying it? Well, they're saying it because that's how determined they are to keep you from talking about the subject. They will call you an accessory to murder. They'll threaten to sue you into poverty as the assistant director of the FBI just did if you don't shut up. That's pretty weird. So you could be sued into poverty if you don't appreciate or don't like adults to be around children or the adults to have kitty porn or, or exploit children in any sexual way mm -mm -mm. that's a damn shame when you think about it. In fact, it's very weird. But they have nothing else to say because actually children really are being sexually exploited in this country. In some cases for money, it's not hidden, it's in the open, and it's totally real. This summer, for example, Matt Walsh exposed the atrocities underway at Vanderbilt Medical Center in Nashville. A physician there admitted to mutilating the genitals of children because it's a profit center for the hospital. Watch this. We surgery in Iowa, Mike. Um, so female to male chest reconstruction can bring in $40,000. Uh, a patient just on routine hormone treatment who I'm only seeing a few times a year can bring in several thousand dollars. Holy shit. So they're exploiting these people for money? Oh, man. Hold on. Let's hear that again. $40,000? Children because it's a profit center for the hospital. Watch this. 
that we surgery make a lot of money. Uh, so female to male chest reconstruction could bring in forty thousand uh, dollars. Patient just on routine hormone treatment who I'm only seeing a few times a year can bring in several thousand dollars that requires a lot of visits and labs. It actually makes money for the hospital. It actually makes money for the hospital. Now, if you were a muckraking reporter with a conscience, that would be the story of a lifetime. It's all there on tape. A doctor admitting they're mutilating the genitals of children for money, naming the dollar amounts. How could you pass that up? But everyone passed it up. No one covered it. Instead, journalists attacked Matt Walsh for uncovering it. Really? What's the motive there? Nor do they cover what's going on at hospitals across the country, including CHOP, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, the famous hospital, a hospital that admitted in an email to performing bottom surgery on a minor and slicing off the breasts of young women for no medical reason whatsoever. There's no medical justification for that ever, and yet they bragged about doing it. In Boston, a staffer at Children's Hospital bragged on tape about two-year-olds preparing to transition. Truly insane, utterly divorced from legitimate medicine, but again, it was completely ignored. Here it is. So most of the patients that we have in the GEMS clinic actually know their gender, usually around the age of puberty, but a good portion of children do know as early as seemingly from the womb, and they will usually express their gender identity as very young children, some as soon as they can talk. They might say phrases such as, I'm a girl, or I'm a boy, or I'm going to be a woman, or I'm going to be a mom. Kids know very, very early. So in the GEMS clinic, we see a variety of young children all the way down to ages two and three, and usually up to the ages of nine. That is not science. That doesn't bear any resemblance to science. That's scary. And yet the media choose to ignore it. Why? Because no decent person can look that or any of this in the face without wincing because it's just too awful. It has nothing to do with medicine. It has nothing to do with improving the lives of patients or making this a better country. No, it is a dangerous cult that is causing irreparable harm to children, not just a few, but a lot. Now, at some point when the spell breaks, our entire society will recognize this because it's obvious and we will all recoil in shame that we ever tolerated it for a second. But we're not there yet. In the meantime, we are grateful for people like Jamie Michelle who has had the bravery to tell the truth about what's happening in the face of unending threats. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly open. There you have it, folks. They're not after the kids. This ain't no agenda. It's just, you know, people who speak out about this is just bad people. That's kind of like our community, how, you know, we protect the killers how the people who speak out against the killers somehow they the bad guy and they need to be out of the community the people who speak up against pedophilia and people who are attaching children to adult things period those are the people that people are upset with to me this is sick children have a place adults have a place and when I grew up, we didn't intertwine the kids and the adults. If the adults was up front, the kids was in the back. If the kids was the adults was in the back, kids was up front. Or they were inside and the adults were outside. Like this is sad. We wonder why what's going on in these streets are going on. These kids fucked up and confused. A lot of them must be getting touched on and everything else if we keep trying to loosen up this pedophilia rule. It's not good for uh, heterosexuals to have sex at an early age. It's not good for a young boy to be having sex with a girl at 11, 12 years old. It's going to consume him. He's not going to be ready for those type of emotion. I'm talking about people don't care. Some people are undercover sick. Oh, man. Takara said we had to stay away from the, uh, behind the curtains, away from the adults. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Say y'all take y'all little ass outside and go play. Exactly. We could not be around adults. And everybody with this new word, hypocritical shit. I learned that adults were hypocritical as soon as I was a kid. I mean, as soon as I was growing up, I would ask logical questions. They'd be like, hey, don't you ever smoke no cigarettes as they lighten up a cigarette. Then you ask, hey, why can't I smoke? You smoking. Don't ask me what I'm doing. I'm grown. I'm like, damn. So, okay. 
I kept getting constant reminders that there's a difference between a child and an adult. It may have been hypocritical, but it let me know as a kid, I can't do the same thing as an adult. So when adults outside in the real world would try to ask me certain things, I hell no, because I know it's wrong because I knew just because I saw mommy smoking a cigarette or just because I saw uncle, brother, whoever smoking a cigarette that was an adult, that's not something that I could do. And that logical shit asking why was going to get your ass whipped. So I had to get them learn that it, life ain't fair. Don't ask why uh, when it comes to adults or you go get that ass whooped. Do what I say, not as I do. That's what I'm talking about. I done heard that too. You done heard that too? <laughs> I definitely heard that. <laughs> Jenny Valet uh, say, open a beer right <laughs> right in your fa our face and tell us not to get the not to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, open a beer right in there. You bet not drink it. Don't you drink beer now, okay? Don't you ever drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> these cigarettes, these cigarettes ain't good for you. <laughs> don't you smoke these goddamn cigarettes now. Whatever you do, don't you get hooked on these cigarettes. <laughs> Shit, four or five years later, that same like damn motherfucking kid smoking a cigarette. One of the ladies in Sufila case was trans. Where you saw that at? <coughs> I ain't see that. I'll look it up though. <coughs> Somebody just uh, super chatted that. Can't even I can't even curse in front of my 16 year old when I heard checking me. Hashtag mindset. Yeah. That, these kids nowadays, they check. Uh -uh, mama. You can't do that. They they think they the parent. I would like that when I was little. I'm gonna tell you what you gotta do, Carl. I'm gonna tell you what my mama did. One chop across the side of my face. I stopped all that asking questions. Yeah, I stopped all that. Uh -uh. All that. I said, Mama, you but you pop. Oh Lord, okay. I get it now. You say about 35 miles. <laughs> it's just like on that movie. How, how, how much it cost to turn these, some of these pies into nigga pies? Oh, you say about 35? Mm -hmm. But listen here, y'all. I got to get up out of this thing. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a happy turkey day. Um, salute to all the, the ladies out there that's cooking and preparing them good old soul food and great meals for everybody to eat and get strong and prosper. And salute to the men that's in there cooking too. I know it's some of you guys that they can throw down in the kitchen. Whoever throwing down in the kitchen, salute to you. Um, yeah, man, try to enjoy your day and be thankful. Because this is the day the Lord has made. And peace be still. All you haters out there, we love you haters, man. Because guess what? We making you haters better day by day, whether you like it or not. We making you haters better. You changing up your stilo. You still dibbling in hate, but you're still trying to advance yourself. At first, you wasn't doing shit, but just staying still and hating. Now some of you haters is traveling. Some of you haters got called, you know. So the light make you haters greater. So I see why you so attached to me, but I get it. But now you got to go on shoe fly, don't bother me. You got to go on and be able to fly now. I, you know, I helped you out. Now go ahead and fly. Leave me alone. This is why God put these leopards out of the city. KB, you are making a difference. Very much appreciate it. You are very much appreciate you. Y'all haters wonder why I rock with KB. Yeah, man. Salute to you, Biz. 
even the haters like you ain't heard nobody say man i listen to that youtube over there and he helped me get a job no it was dudes being expired getting jobs and going out trying to create things and, and fuck if you fail at least you try it and get up and try again that's what it's about that's what's america that's what america is about it's about trying you motherfucker getting so caught up in this internet shit that now a bunch of bitch ass nigga that's sitting behind a computer ain't trying shit sitting here pointing out other people's shit no you gotta try shit do shit all of it is a teachable moment you don't gotta worry about whether you how good it succeed what did you learn from it now your next thing you know it's gonna be good we wouldn't even be able to fly in a plane if it wasn't for the right brothers having enough wherewithal to fail and get back up and try again i don't think the right brothers would have ever tried to have a plane if we had the internet if they had the internet back then, it'd be motherfuckers. These stupid son bitches trying to goddamn create a plane. The first time they crashed, they would have put that shit on CNN. Da -da -da. Sports Center, all these goddamn shows. Look at these stupid ass brothers that fell out the goddamn sky again. Dumb son bitches think they're going to be able to fly. Never will think it would happen. We just need to put them in the same asylum. They're trying to put stuff in the air that we all can fly on. I would never get in one of those. And look at us all. We flying right goddamn now because two people believe in themselves and believe in something that nobody else can believe in that people at that time i guarantee was calling them crazy and despite being called crazy and whatever else they continue and plow forward and that's how we gotta be that's how we gotta be y'all always call people crazy that understand that it ain't about what the fuck you saying people got one life to live and they should be able to live it Kwame you are the bomb Pat you the bomb too <laughs> you talking about I bet the right brother stole the ideal from a black man <laughs> I don't know who stole what and, and, and shit that ain't too far fetched from knowing some of the history but I, I don't know about that I don't know about that, but I'm just saying, just the, the don't make the story bad. It's, it's about perseverance. A lot of the youth don't have any perseverance because of the cameras and because we over exacerbate these failures as like they like, like people are nothing over one mistake and one failure. So now people don't even try. I'm telling you, there's more people that get their rocks off and pointing out somebody else's failure while they ain't doing shit. That's it. I'm free. But y'all have a blessed day, man. Shout out to Carcino for life. Shout out to uh, One Crack News, uh, Sister T ears to the streets um gems from kwame brown we hope we can get <clears throat> get her page back going uh shout out to the political kryptonite they said they demonetize his page like jesus christ i need to stop shouting people out they gonna try to monetize anybody i shout out shit he is already about to start beefing with me so she he gonna be in the good graces of YouTube. <laughs> but anyway, man, y'all have a blessed day, man. I'm up out of this thing. Don't eat too much turkey. Stay safe. Um, go.